My name is Alison Kelly. My title is a director for the Canoes of the Marshall Islands. And my role is the implementation of the Lagoon uh, Sustainable Sea Transport. So we work on the vessels for the Lagoon side of the islands. My grandfather um, was a canoe builder. My dad and my grandfather, they would tell me their story of their life when they, when they were young, in bikini I told before 1946, they, they would sail with their, you know, with their fathers and their grandfathers between bikini and wrong about them. So at the end of the day, any old Marshallese, they're all ocean people, so canoeing, voyaging is always part of their, it's in their blood. My name is Raphael Held. I'm the project director of the Low Carbon Sea Transport Project in the Republic of the Marshall Islands. The project is funded through the International Climate Initiative, important element of the German development strategy. The commissioning ministry of the project is the Ministry for Environment, Nature Conservation, Nuclear Safety and Consumer Protection. In overall terms, the project has been initiated in April 2017 and has a duration until the end of this year with the possibility to be extended until the end of the year 2024. The partnership between WAM, the Canos of the Marshall Islands and the German International Corporation GIZ is ongoing since the year 2018. GIZ is funding the so-called Inside Lagoon component that is implemented by our partner WAM. What is important about this, uh, it's, I would say that most of the needs for the people in the Marshalls would be the needs of transportation. If you look at the structures of the atolls, it just the mouth of a, uh, a volcano, so it's you have the islets. So, in order to go from where you live to get medicine, you need water transport. Everywhere, any needs you need water. You know, you need water transport. And of course, we're ocean people. We always build canoes, and canoes is always the most important tool in our in our society, in our life. After being colonized, uh, we were introduced to the convenience of motorboats and um, of course uh, with the um, World War II stopped all the canoe building pro uh, activities and canoe navigation sailing you know in the early 60s 70s people leaned toward motorboats but now it's so impossible to uh, live with just the motorboats especially in the outer islands where main source is coconut, copra oil, and most people, I guess, live on $2 a day or so, and a gallon of gasoline to operate these motorboats is $10. So if it's $2, they need to work five days in order to get one gallon so they can go get their needs. So that's the most important thing about the needs of sea transport. And of course, now that we are facing climate change problems, it's, uh, we, we need to start looking at options so we can use less and less fossil fuel, start depending on wind and sun to survive. Part of the, uh, this program is to train the people in the outer islands. So we, we bring in uh, people from the outer islands and they stay with us for three months. The first step we do with these guys is we sit around and we talk about where they come from. What is the most important needs in the outer islands for these vessels? Man, join program in Chikijik, Ganan Win, Labalak, Chikijik, and Pride in Chikijik. I mean, it's a pretty program, you know. Again, all of an island in Jogoja. But while in the marriage of Kajabal fuel, Kajabal would you like a kudu, Alabalagan, Chiving an army for running in the Lavala one in the boat. If you do Kajabal, the Chevan on the Alago motor port, but Chen Maramatan, Chabro Chicken Nichella fuel. Wagin fuel can go win or kudu. Chicken wagin wire, Pandra Mile and Chicken and Wagin me, Chiaj project. Elop Kalap can bear Mugota Kata Hero and Wagin one Chiaj, Rala Company, Alabalak Binani Company, Emarong Kare Tun, Chen Wagin one Rumayal. Tupereno Katairo, Wagin one Rumayal, Nebai Rongoni, Chen Marong Kare Tun, Telogan one Chiaj Kare Tun. Can bear Mugota Malagi Katairo here. 
My name is Henrik Richter Alten. I'm a naval architect from Kiel in Germany. My role over here for the low carbon sea transport project is to closely work with Wana Elon and Magil, the local partner on uh, designing low carbon, no emission crafts for lagoon transportation and fishing. With everything we do here, we base it on the traditional canoe. So we base it on the indigenous technology that evolved here for like 2000 years. So when we start to make a boat, when we start to design something, to build something, we first look in the past. By using uh, marine plywood and epoxy and fiberglass in the stitch and glue technique, we can make sure that the boats last way longer. So similar sailing craft built on that with that technique. First ones emerged in the, in the late 60s, early 70s. If you take good care for them, if you repair them, if you maintain them, they can, they can sail for almost forever. In general, not only about the WAM can, in general about all the prototypes, all the canoes we make at WAM under this uh, low carbon sea transport project, is that there is no metal used. There is not a single piece of metal in these, in these boats. It's all held together by either by glue, by epoxy glue, or by rope lashings. And these rope lashings are a very crucial thing because, for example, the cross beams and the hulls, they are lashed together. There, is, there are no bolts, no glue, no screws. It's only rope lashing. And this rope lashing makes the whole thing flexible. So the catamaran platform or the canoe platform can actually adapt to the waves. It can, uh, it's like the shock absorber of a car. When you make all four wheels very rigid, you have a very bumpy ride. But when you make sure they can like, move up and down a little bit, they can adapt to the roads, they can adapt to the wave of the ocean. And you get a much more pleasant ride and also you, um, you reduce the stress so you can build it lighter. And by building it lighter, you can put more cargo on top. And also an important thing is they're very easy to replace. So people on the Aura Islands, they, have, they always have rope. Either they import it, they buy it from the mainland, or what they can always do is get a coconut, get a husk off and make their own coconut rope in a traditional way. And just use that for lashings. The Harry Proa design was uh, developed by Rob Denny from Harry Proa from Australia. And it's basically uh, a redesigned Marshallese canoe. So you have the long main hull and you have a smaller outrigger hull. But the biggest difference compared to the Marshallese hull is that the outrigger hull is way bigger and you can actually sit on it and use it as a real, real hull. So this design was, was made mainly with fishing in mind. So it has a very large platform. The sail is on a larger canoe hull. So the platform is, is free of a sail. There's no boom swinging around. You have lots of, lots of space for your fishing lines, for, for your equipment to move around, to uh, land the catch, to, to handle your hooks, your bait, whatever you need there. And a uh, second feature is there is a fish hold in the main hull. So there is a little plug on the bottom that you can open and then seawater comes up. So when you catch something, you can actually throw it there in the hull in the water and it stays fresh for a while. So on the other islands, of course, the people don't have ice. They, most of the times they don't even have a fridge. So when they catch fish, they're always limited by how long can they keep it? How long can it sit there in the sun? 
But when you have like salt water and the fish is still alive or it's just sitting in the water, it stays fresh for, for a much longer time. So it makes, makes the life just easier. You know, recently we went to Enuatakato, uh, working with PSS and GSS, also as part of the team. We came up with a curriculum that, you know, we were able to work it in the school. The kids loved it. They will remember it for the rest of their life. We want to include this in the national curriculum system. By adding that into the national curriculum system, the kids will have something to use as their goal in getting, you know, in the future. Instead of just regular car mechanics or air conditioning, they come up with new and more innovative designs that will really help this country. And I'm sure there are thousands of them that we don't even think about it today. Yeah, we, like I said, you know, we have already have a catamaran that we will be using a solar power outboard. And the goal is also use this as a tool for the high school kids to come and enjoy and go out, collect data, do their research, do their reports, do their studies. As soon as they graduate from high school, maybe one or two will say, well, I want to be an engineer to come up with a different design that would make this, these design better. So we're actually planting the seeds, a seeds that came out of our traditional canoeing culture into this new hybrid system that includes traditional and modern. My wish is to continue our canoeing culture, to provide a foundation of knowledge for the Marshallese youth so they can come up with different ideas that will fit tomorrow's needs and of course to fight uh, our existence as we are facing the climate change.